Catch a maggots, I'm Sergeant Slaughter from WWE. You're watching Fox News. Don't touch that dial. And that's an order. When I was asked to uh, be the first living G.I. Joe, a uh, character in its 30-year history at that time, that meant a lot. You know, the first living G.I. Joe, not an animated. They took a real person and put them into the animation. At the time, you know, it was a, it was a pretty big honor, but I didn't realize it was going to be as big as it is today. Wherever I go, uh, do autograph sessions and, and meet uh, people around uh, the country in hospitals or veterans' hospitals, children's hospitals. It's a pretty big thing uh, when when they give you the yo-jo. When I first started uh, in the WWE, I was a uh, villain because I was a, uh, a drill instructor and everybody that's ever been in a military uh, boot camp hates their drill instructor anyway, so I didn't have to work too hard on getting people to dislike me and boo me. And, but when I went uh, as an Iraqi sympathizer, it was a whole different uh, battle because uh, you know we're talking about the United States of America and uh, they were in a confrontation with Saddam Hussein and that's all real life and so uh, we had to kind of tiptoe around a few things I don't regret but we're you know tongue-in-cheek singing happy birthday with a birthday cake in the ring to Saddam Hussein and and having people stand up and give 30 seconds of silence to all the brave Iraqi soldiers who lost their lives in the overtake of Kuwait. That didn't go over so well, and uh, Vince McMahon had called and said that somebody called him, or called the wrestling office and threatened to kill me and my family and kill his family and him and blow up our houses and blow up the wrestling office and the studios and our cars. And so he took it pretty serious, and uh, so he sent a uh, four-man uh, security uh, crew over to my home walked the perimeter of my property 24-7 with weapons. And and uh, wherever I went from that point on, I had to kind of watch where I was going. I never traveled with other talent, uh, other superstars, never walked through a terminal. I'd always be driven to an airplane. I'd go up the stairs into the airplane and I would leave down the stairs, escorted to a hotel or to the arena. We started you know, getting a lot, of, lot more and a lot more bomb threats and death threats and FBI asked me to wear a bulletproof vest at one time, which I did to, to wear in the uh, rain. It was a pretty, pretty serious situation, and uh, we handled it as best we could. And when uh, lives were being lost from in the war, we, we backed out of it and we uh, went to ask for our, my country back, and, and uh, people accepted me back, and, and here we are today. Well, it was a stroke of genius to be able to, to uh, go back, watch uh, a Sergeant Slaughter against an Iron Sheik or a Pat Patterson in an alley fight. Sarge getting behind Rods, and yes, the Cobra Clutch applied on Johnny Rods. Sarge sinking it in. It's just uh, incredible to know that it's available out there, and I watch it myself. Uh, I. Uh, uh, member of the, of the network and I watch a lot of my, my matches and some I don't even remember, but you're so busy sometimes I wrestled 14 times in one week. So you don't always remember, you know, those, uh, those matches, but boy, it brings back a lot of memory.